last class we have seen a procedure which takes a context free grammar as input and gives us a put down automata with a single state as output said that the resulting pda is accepting the same language as that of the given context free grammar and thus we prove that for every context free grammar there exists an equivalent push down automata and today we are going to prove that for every single state push down automata there exists an equivalent context free grammar we are going to see an algorithm which will take a single state push down automata as input and will produce a context free grammar as output said that the language represented by the context free grammar will be same as the language represented by the given push down automata so let us see how we can do it so we need to generate a context free grammar from a single state push down automata as usual we are going to see how we can do it with the help of an illustrative example so consider the single state uh, empty stack push down automata a with the following transitions for the language of things over ab with the equal number of a's and b's so the language is the set of all strings over ab with the equal number of a's and b's and here are the transitions q1 in the automaton so not that this is a single state automaton q is the only state and don't worry about how i designed the, the machine that is a different question and uh, here uh, our purpose is to understand how the given machine can be systematically converted into a context free grammar now please take it from me that this is the uh, this is one of the correct uh, push down automata for this language so there are seven transition relations here and now given this machine and consider an input to that machine here i am giving a b b a as input so there are two a's and two b's so the input string is in the language and given this input string from the previous lectures we know that this is the initial configuration q is the only state and that should be the initial state so you are in the initial state the read head is pointing to the first simple in the input and the content of the stack is dead just the bottom of stack simple so this is the initial configuration and uh, which transition can be applied this is q a and bot so for q a bot there is transition number 2 what is it say only one state don't change your state or remain in that state and replace what bot with a bot so if you apply transition number 2 what you are doing is you're replacing this bot with a bot and uh, moving your read head to the next simple so that's what you are doing and now what is the configuration which transition can be applied qba is there a transition for that yes number 6 is for qba what does it say remaining in the state q you just pop off the top of stack symbol so take out it nothing is going to be pushed on because it's epsilon so this is going to be the next configuration if you apply the rule number 6 or the transition number 6 so the read head is positioned to the next symbol a is taken out 
and that's what is asked to do. And now, which is the transition that you can apply now? QB board. I think this number three transition can be applied. QB board. What is it saying? You take out board and push B board. So replace board with B board. So this would be the corresponding configuration. Move right head to the right. Board is replaced with B board. And now, which is the transition that you want? QAB. Is there a transition for that? Yes. QAB is transition number five. What does it say? You pop this simple B. That is what it is saying. So you move your read head to the right. So you uh, now the processing of the input string is over. You have you taken out the simple B, and this is the configuration. So the input is completely processed. And note that this is a, an empty stack machine. That means to accept you want to empty the stack. Now the stack is not empty. It is containing the uh, bottom of stack symbol. You want to take it out. So which transition you can apply? Q on epsilon, nothing. Uh, without consuming any symbol, you have to take out what? And here is this transition number one is for that. Q, if you are in state Q, Without consuming an input when the top of stack symbol is bought, what you can do is you can take out that bot. And if you apply transition number one, you are getting into this final configuration where you finish reading your input and you emptied your stack. So by the empty stack acceptance criterion, you are accepting it. So here is a five step computation for accepting the string ABBA. Now the question is, can we obtain a context grammar whose leftmost derivation can simulate the computation of A, of this push down automaton A for an arbitrary input? This is for a particular input. The question is general. So it's asking, is it possible for us to get or to produce a context-free grammar from a push-down automaton A such that the resulting context-free grammar can simulate the computation of any input with a leftmost derivation? And the answer is yes. And how can we do it is in fact the inverse of what we did in the last class for obtaining a push down automaton from the context free grammar. If you inverse what we did, then you can obtain a context free grammar. Only one difference is there that I can tell you later. It is possible and now we can try to see how can we do it by using the same example PDA and the same input. So here is the PDA that we have seen and here is the five step computation that uh, that is for accepting the input string ABBA. And if you recall what we did in the last class for generating a single state PDA from context free grammar, do you remember the relationship between the configuration and the corresponding sentential form in the derivation of the string in the grammar. Hope you remember, otherwise you, you, uh, you want to look at that lecture first and uh, see what it was. If you remember, this is the starting configuration. And suppose capital S is going to be your start simple in the required grammar, then where your derivation begin? You know that the derivation always begins with the start simple of the grammar. And if you recall, the sentential form in the corresponding derivation was actually 
the string that you already processed from the input that is epsilon here nothing is processed every simple needs to be processed we are into the first simple so nothing is processed so it is epsilon followed by the content of the stack if you recall that was the condition at every moment the corresponding tangential form was the string which is already processed in this case nothing is processed so epsilon followed by the content of stack here the content of stack is bot bottom but i am calling it as capital s if you recall in the constructed single state push down automaton from the grammar the start simple of the grammar was the bottom of stack simple for the constructed machine hope you remember it even otherwise here what i am going to do is i will just replace bottom with the capital s so wherever bottom is there i will call it as capital s this is just a renaming please don't confuse so if you recall the configuration can be converted into the corresponding uh, sentential form in the derivation of the grammar or in the grammar how will you do it it is the string processed so far in this case nothing is processed so epsilon followed by the content of the stack epsilon followed by the content of the stack is bottom it is just bottom but whenever i have bottom i am calling it as capital s that's it and what will be the configuration now here the string process is small a followed by the content of the stack is a bottom so bottom will be represented as s so it will be small a followed by capital a s capital a i am just calling bottom as s that is the difference okay whenever i say s it's nothing but bottom and now you can easily say what this is what is the string already processed ab so it is ab followed by bot, uh, bottom bottom will be represented as s ab follow, followed by capital s so what will be this i have already processed the first three three simples so it will be abb followed by b bottom so abb followed by b bottom where bottom is represented as capital s so what will be this the string is completely processed so it is a b b a followed by bottom so a b b a followed by bottom bottom is represented as capital s and finally here so what is it a b b a followed by content of the stack is nothing so it is a b b a so this is going to be the sequence of uh, sentences forms required in the leftmost derivation in the grammar that we are going to construct and now we can see how we can construct the grammar in fact from every transition relation we are going to define a production in the grammar that is what we are going to do and what we are going to do is exactly the reverse of what we did in the last class and here we can ask this question if this is the case then from the start simple we need to go to this sentential form so how can you go so this is in the derivation so which production you need you need to replace capital s with a small a capital a s that means you need to have a production with the lhs as s and rhs as s this is exactly what we have and corresponding to transition rule number 2 you need this production okay now how will you go from this sentential form to this if you carefully look at this you can see that what you did is the middle capital a is replaced with a small b so what is the corresponding production for transition number 6 here you need capital a replay uh, can be replaced with small b this is exactly what we did capital a is replaced with small b now this step how can you do this if you look at these two what i did is now you have small ab followed by capital s here what you have small ab followed by capital s is replaced by small b capital b s so what production you need corresponding to number 3 rule here it is capital s in the lhs and small b capital b s in the rhs this is exactly what we okay we can redo it after we finish after we collect all the rules now 
here is the next step in the required derivation and what is it here it was small a b b followed by capital b a and what is your small a b b followed by this that means this capital b is getting replaced with the small a so that is the corresponding rule capital b is replaced with small a this is the rule corresponding to transition number five and now the last step and what we did this is cap small a b b a followed by capital s and what is this small a b b a and what is the corresponding rule you got it now right capital s is replaced with epsilon so corresponding to transition number one you need this capital s going to epsilon so this is what we did and now can you generalize and see how we can convert a transition relation into a production just look at it and see how can you do it there's no magic this is just the reverse of what we did in the last class for obtaining a PDF from the CFC. Now this is the reverse process. Hope you guessed it. Anyway, I'm giving it. So what we did is, if you have a production of this kind, that is, if you are in the state Q, and if small c is the next input simple, and capital X is on the top of stack, and what is this ruling, rule saying, this transition rule saying? You remain in the state Q and replace capital X with beta. Now, what is beta? Beta, beta is a string of tape or sorry, stack al alphabet. And what is input C? Input C can be either an input simple or epsilon. Either an input simple or epsilon. And that is why you are getting this transition. That is the only difference when compared to the algorithm that we discussed in the last class. In that case, the epsilon transition was not there because we assumed that the grammar is in grayback normal form. But in general, when you convert a PDA into a context grammar, you will be getting this kind of a production. And that is why I put it as the sigma or epsilon. So this is exactly the rule. If you have this, then what rule you have? The LSS is going to be the top of stack simple of the transition rule, capital X. And what is the RHS? RHS is the next simple which is given here, followed by whatever is replacing capital X. So, it is capital X going to small c followed by beta. Maybe we can verify in one or two cases. Maybe here, what is the rule? This is the transition relation. So, what would be the corresponding transition? Bottom going to, we know that we are going to represent bottom with capital S. This is just a renaming. So, bottom is S going to small a followed by a bottom. Small a followed by capital A. Bottom is represented as capital S. Maybe we can uh, take another example here. And what would be the transition required? Sorry, uh, the production rule required. Capital A going to B, small b followed by nothing. So, capital A going to small b followed by nothing. So, you can see that uh, this is the rule which you can blindly apply to derive all these transitions. Now, we have uh, this example is not enough for converting all the transition rules into productions. There are two more left with. We can apply this rule and obtain. Can you tell me what is the corresponding rule you will get here? The top of stack symbol is capital A. So, is capital A going to small a followed by capital AA. So, this is exactly what you are getting. And what is here? It is capital B going to small b followed by capital BB. So, this is a very simple rule to apply. But what you are uh, uh, obtaining as a grammar is a correct grammar representing the same language as that of the given context free grammar. 
Now we can try to derive this string from the start symbol. You start with the start symbol. You need to apply the production corresponding to number two. What is the production? This is the production. So replace capital S with small a capital A S. This is what I did. And then I want to apply the production corresponding to rule number six. What is it? Capital A should be replaced with small b. It is the leftmost derivation. This capital A is going to be replaced with a small b. This is what I did. Then, which is the next rule? The production corresponding to rule number three. What is it? This capital S needs to be replaced with b capital B S. So here, this S is going to be replaced with small b capital B S. Then, what is the next rule? Next rule is number five. Number five is for capital B. This B is going to be replaced with small a. So that's what I did. And now at last, production number one. What is it? Yes, can be replaced with null string. So I'm deriving the required string. And not that at every point, uh, what we are getting is the tendential form corresponding to the consent uh, configuration. Here it is S. Here it is A capital small A capital A S. Then small A B capital S. Then so, small A B B capital B S. Then small A B B A capital S. And finally small A B B A. So this is the required sequence of steps in the algorithm to generate a contest result. This is a very simple procedure. I hope you followed it. Otherwise, uh, watch it again and see how we did it. And now this is the time for us to formally write the procedure for doing it. So what is it? Given a single state, put down automata accepting by empty stack. And this is the automaton given. What is it? A single state automaton with the Q as the state. This is the input alphabet. Stack alphabet, star state, the only state, transition relations, and bottom of stack simple. Then we can define a grammar from A such that the grammar is going to represent the same language as that of the given put down automaton. And here, without loss of generality, you assume that capital S is not an element of the stack alphabet. And why I say without loss of generality? Suppose capital S is in gamma, then you just rename capital S with something else and uh, get an equivalent gamma without capital S. So that you can always do. And that is why I say without loss of generality, assume that capital S is not in the stack alphabet. Okay. Now, we want uh, the grammar GA which is going to simulate the, all the computations in the given machine with a leftmost derivation in the grammar that we are going to define. And what is the grammar? Uh, grammar is always a quadruple. Where what is gamma prime? Gamma prime is, the, you know that it is a tape alphabet. From the tape alphabet, I am taking out bottom. And what I am do, adding, I am adding capital S. I assume that capital S is not an element. So here what I am effectively doing it, doing is I am renaming bottom with the capital S. That is exactly what we are doing. And that is what we did in the example also. Whenever we have, uh, we had a bot, uh, we replaced it with capital S. This is, this is what we did there. And this is what, how we can do it formally. And what is gamma prime? Is the finite set of variables in the grammar. Variables are non-terminal. When we define a grammar, we used to uh, use a variable name capital C to represent it, but I am calling it as gamma prime. So what is it? Finite set of variables or non-terminal, capital letters. And where the only difference when compared to gamma is, I have renamed bottom with the capital S. And what is sigma? Sigma is the set of terminals, finite set of terminals. That is the input alphabet for the given automaton. 
and uh, what is capital S? S is the start symbol of the resulting gram. And finally, the finest set of production rules. And how is it defined? I'm just copying the generalization that we did in the previous slide. That is, if you have a transition of this form, if you are in the state queue, for the next input symbol C, which is either an alphabet in the input alphabet or it is epsilon. And what is capital X? Capital X is the tape alphabet, sorry, stack alphabet. It is the top of stack symbol. Then what do you do? You know that only one state. So remain in the state and replace the top of stack symbol capital X with a beta. Then what is the corresponding rule you want to add? You know that it is X going to C beta. This is what we are adding. Okay, so this is what we did. And now recall that you may have introduced bottom into the rule because uh, X could be bottom or beta may contain bottom. So we need to now replace bottom with S and that is the only other step. Replace bottom with capital S in all productions added to P in step A. So this is the algorithm, which is not a difficult algorithm, it's a very simple algorithm. And this is just the reverse of what we did in the last class, except for this epsilon. And with this, we are moving on to the last slide of this lecture, where I'm giving you a practice question for you to practice and see how exactly the algorithm works. So what is the question? Define a single state uh, MD stack PDA. That is a single state PDA, which is going to accept by emptying the stack for the language of strings over AB said that the number of B's in X is twice that of the number of A's in X. Similar to what language we consider, but here the number is like a number of B's is 2 into number of A's. And you have to first design a single state push down automaton. After that, obtain an equivalent context free gram on GA from A. You just apply the procedure that we discussed today. And after that, what you do? You simulate in parallel the computations in the, uh, in the push down automaton and the derivations, I mean leftmost derivations in the grammar for the input strings given here. There are three input strings, what do you do? You do it in parallel, you see the computations, computation for the string in A and also the derivation for the same string in GA. And you compare the configuration with your sentential form and see how the algorithm works. So today we have seen a procedure to generate a context-free grammar from a single state push down automaton. So we proved that for every single state push down automaton, there exists a context-free grammar. And now to complete the proof of Chomsky v. Schurzenbarg theorem which tells us that uh, context-free languages, sorry, context-free grammars and uh, push down automata are equivalent. It reminds us to prove that for every push down automata with any number of states, finitely many states, there exists an equivalent uh, push down automaton with a single state. Because if we are getting a single state push down automaton, now we know how to obtain an equivalent context-free grammar. But we don't know whether there exists a single state automaton for an arbitrary push down automaton. But there exists and that is what we are going to see in the next class. In the meantime, you try to understand what we did today, solve the exercise problem and also think about how can you utilize the non-deterministic power of the push down automaton and the stack as an intermediate storage to convert an arbitrary push down automaton into a single state push down automaton.
which is not a very uh, simple algorithm that is actually the beauty of the Chomsky AV Schurzenberg theorem which proved that context free Gramos and uh, push down automata are equivalent. Anyway, we are going to discuss that nice proof in the next class. Thank you.